When I first started getting back into records, I found myself, I would put a record on and just be amazed time after time after time at how great these things sounded. And that kind of sent me down the whole rabbit hole originally. I figured, well, there must be some commonality here. And I started looking at who mastered these albums. And I was able to string together a lot of common threads. I was finding R.L. and the Dead Wax for Robert Ludwig. I was finding Sterling and the initials T.J. for Ted Jensen. So all of these things kind of started adding up for me. And I really loved kind of discovering more and more albums that sounded fantastic. And... As I continued down that road or down that path, I then started to take a look at pressing plants. And in a similar fashion to the mastering engineers, I started to discover that certain pressing plants from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, their vinyl records sounded better in many cases than other records that had been pressed somewhere else. It's actually, in some cases, you could actually tell the difference from the same album being pressed at one plant versus another plant. We know today that um, all the issues out there with um, pressing plants and the kind of backlog uh, as far as the pressure that is on these, these pressing plants to get titles pressed and back in print there are a lot of issues today with lousy pressings and off-center labels and noisy vinyl. Um, you hear it time in and time out. Now, we can kind of reliably depend on anything that's pressed at Palace or quality record pressings um, or RTI. But I... You know, those are kind of well known today, but I wanted to kind of take a look back. And this is all just kind of from discovery, from, from building up a, a record collection. Um, today I want to take a look at the Specialty Records Corporation. This is an old, old, old firm uh, that finally, I think, went defunct as far as um, pressing records back in 2002. Um, it was a family-run business that was purchased by the WEA Group in 1978, Warner Electra Atlantic, huge conglomerate that um, at the height of the record revolution in 1978, the first record revolution, um, they were pressing records left, right, and center for their own kind of stable of labels and then they were also taking on outside jobs from other labels and i don't know what it is there are um there are different people talking about uh in the various forums of course about specialty records and some say that well they used a higher vinyl uh or, or more higher quality vinyl compound in the biscuits you know the vinyl compound biscuits that are actually used when pressing uh, records, um, but I haven't been able to find any definitive information uh, that kind of confirms that yes or no or one way or the other. What I do know though is my ears and I have 10 records that were all pressed at Specialty Records Corporation that I'm going to highlight today. They all share something in common and that is just they have incredible sound stages wide and full they all have plenty of punch plenty of slam um, there's a fantastic amount of air in these records when you're listening to them so you can actually hear um, the separation of the actual instruments and the instrumentation on these albums um, they're really a joy to listen to whenever I put them on my turntable. And, um, you know, I've gone down the rabbit hole on the mastering engineers. Uh, there's still more to cover on that front, but 
Um, I thought I would kick off uh, a brand new series today. I'm going to call it the uh, the Pressing Plants uh, 101. Um, although 101, you would think it's a basic college course. I think this is more to, of an advanced university course. And um, thank you for joining me today. I'm Tim with the University of Vinyl. Let's get started and, and take a deep dive and look at the Specialty Records Corporation and several fantastic examples um, that hopefully you can discover on your own or you may already have this album. Put them on and see if you agree with me. I am telling you they all sound very, very, very good. So how do we tell um, what is a specialty records pressing? There's a variety of ways depending on the actual uh, label. Now, uh, some of the albums, uh, the actual label matrix, um, the catalog number per se on the label would end in dash SP. So you would know at that point in time, it's a specialty records pressing. Um, of course, the Bible for all of this stuff um, is first of all, doing your own research and then looking everything up on Discogs. Discogs, as you all know, is um, kind of like a Wikipedia. It's an open database. But by and large, it's pretty accurate and um, you can kind of nail down exactly what you have in your hands by using Wikipedia, checking out the label codes and the dead wax uh, runoff information as well. Speaking of the dead wax, you will see a very distinctive Specialty Records Corporation uh, stamped logo in many of these albums. Um, that is a telltale sign. You have to be careful though, because sometimes, um, you know, back back to the WEA the WEA purchase of Specialty Records in 1978, they also purchased um, Allied Records, which was an LA-based uh, record pressing company, and uh, together Allied and Specialty Records. They were joined together to form the new WEA Manufacturing Company. So the WEA group, they were perfectly positioned because they had a West Coast pressing operation and an East Coast pre pressing operation. Uh, especially it was based in a uh, small town, Oliphant, Pennsylvania. Um, but so back to that situation, in some cases, um, albums, uh, the metal plating would be done at specialty, uh, but then it would be shipped off to the West Coast. Uh, let's say they needed to feed the distribution network on the West Coast, it would make more sense to press the albums at Allied than at specialty. In these cases, uh, you can find uh, an A uh, embossed in the center ring of uh, either side A or side B. And that would tell you that even though there's a Specialty Records Corporation uh, machine stamp logo in the Dead Wax, um, if there's an A embossed, that meant that it was actually, the metal parts were uh, manufactured and made at uh, Specialty, but um, the pressing happened at Allied on the West Coast. Similarly, if you see an East, uh, uh, pressed into the center label uh, and sometimes you can only see the T because sometimes with time these letters have faded but in other instances they're very clear uh, but that tells you that they were definitely pressed uh, at specialty records. In 1987 the two Scottish brothers Jim and William Reed put out their second album uh, that was, of course, Darklands, and Darklands is an amazing album. Uh, you know, Jesus and Mary Chain, they are known for kind of their churning wall of sound with kind of bright spots of, of sunshine that kind of come through in a jangle pop uh, format. Uh, and this album 
they kind of peeled away some of that kind of uh, wall of sound and uh, there was a little more separation of instruments on here. Things were a little more clearer. Uh, the melodies kind of came to the forefront. It's a fantastic album. It's a great follow-up to the groundbreaking Psycho Candy. Uh, but this is a fantastic sounding record. Uh, standouts on this, of course, are April Skies and the title track is fantastic and of course happy when it rains uh, this was on that warner label there it is and you will find that uh, specialty record stamp in the dead wax that is dark lands the jesus and mary chain this thing sounds incredible great band in 1985 we got around the world in a day from Prince and the Revolution. This was the important follow-up to Purple Rain. Uh, it kind of came out to not a lot of fanfare. Prince actually held back singles until after the actual album had been released. Um, it came in a really kind of cool gatefold. All the reviewers when talking about this album note it's kind of a variety in the songs and the song structures. There is a heavy dose of psychedelia on this album, uh, especially on the fantastic song, The Ladder. Uh, just a gorgeous song. There is definitely kind of a hat tip to that great string of albums from Stevie Wonder. You can, you can hear uh, the influence of Wonder, in, in exact, in, particularly in that song, The Ladder. Uh, this is a great, great, great album. Um, somewhat kind of overlooked, I think, in the Prince discography. There's that custom label. Um, it helps that the album was mastered by Bernie Grunman uh, as far as the overall sound quality of this thing. But again, a specialty records corporation pressing. It is dead silent vinyl. It sounds amazing. It's got a huge sound stage. It's got great separation of instruments. Uh, this is a great, great, great listen. In 1987, we got a great Sophista Pop album. Check out my video uh, highlighting different Sophista Pop albums. Yeah, Sophista Pop was a thing. <laughs> and uh, we got a great album from, of course, Martin Fry and Mark White. Those are the two main principles at least at that point in time, that formed ABC. And this is Alphabet City. Uh, the title was taken because it was recorded in New York City. Martin Fry um, had been getting over an illness and they wanted to record in New York. They actually um, looked up the great Bernard Edwards, the late great Bernard Edwards bass player for Cheek. Uh, he did much of the production work on this album, along with uh, Fry and Mark White. And it is a combination of, of, of sophisticated pop music, uh, blue-eyed soul with um, a heavy slice of funk. And um, the standout tracks on this, of course, uh, the great song, uh, When Smokey Sings, King Without a Crown, and the supremely funky and dramatic The Night You Murdered Love. That is another great pressing pressed at Specialty Records, Alphabet City from 1987. In 1985, another band from Minneapolis put out an album I'm quite fond of. I also like the name. It's Tim. <laughs> This is Tim from The Replacements. This, of course, famously was the last album that founding lead guitar Bob Stinson appeared on. Uh, this is the album where Paul Westerberg kind of continued to stretch out and hone his fantastic songwriting. Um, everything from, you know, the influence of... of uh, the influences of Paul Westerberg are kind of amazing if you think about it. He was influenced by Merle Haggard on, on one end of the spectrum, all the way to uh, the Rolling Stones, and then the power pop, 
a big star in, of course, Alex Chilton. Um, Bastards of Young is on this album. Here comes a regular left of the dial. Um, of course, they had the famous uh, appearance on Saturday Night Live in, in which they were basically all inebriated. They had spent way too much time uh, drinking um, in the uh, in the in the dressing room, waiting for you know, waiting for the live show to commence. Um, it's a legendary performance, very very a shambling but powerful performance. Uh, Bob Stinson was was way over his head as far as. Uh, <laughs> Uh, way, way too many, too much time had passed, too many, too many uh, beers, too many substances had been consumed. He actually tripped and broke his guitar. He had to borrow a guitar from uh, from G.E. Smith, the Saturday Night Live band leader. Uh, but this thing sounds great. Of course, it was on that Sire label. Um, another fantastic specialty records pressing. I have two reissues of this album because that's what we do, right? We buy multiple copies of albums. This thing blows the reissues away. There's just a lot more punch, a lot more slam to this. Uh, the soundstage is louder. Um, try and seek out an original if you're a fan of this band and this album. In 1987, we got what would eventually become the second to last Cars album. This was, of course, the last album to feature the entire band. Ben Orr passed away, unfortunately, and the, the remaining guys did get together in 2012 for Move Like This. But today I'm talking about Door to Door. This is a really, really underrated, fantastic Cars album. Um, it was on the Electra label, and I have a specialty records pressing of it. Sounds fantastic. Again, not to sound like a broken record, but the soundstage is huge. Uh, there are some incredible guitar licks and solos from none other than one of my favorite guitarists, Elliot Easton. This thing was co-produced co by Okasik and Greg Hawks. Um, Leave or Stay is a great song that actually uh, leads off side one. Strap Me In, featuring great guitar playing from, from, uh, from Easton. Uh, Coming Up You is great. Everything You Say, You Are the Girl was a single. That is Door to Door from 1987. Look for the specialty records pressing. You're going to be impressed. In 1978, ABC Records put out a two-record comp album uh, called Steely Dan's Greatest Hits. It was famously mastered by Robert Ludwig. The holy grail of this double album is to find the RL for Robert Ludwig stamped on all four sides of this double album. It, that is incredibly difficult to find. I actually had a recent uh, commenter telling me that he had actually found one recently. All power to you. That's fantastic. I uh, I have a copy here, um, which is an early ABC Records pressing. Um, you know, ABC famously went out of business. MCA bought ABC, and uh, there are later pressings uh, and issues of this album. In some cases, it's not a gatefold and it's on the MCA label. You want to avoid those and you want to find the earlier ABC pressings, ideally with at least one Robert Ludwig stamp uh, along with Master Disc. Uh, but that's the one that you want to find. That's the ABC 8th note rainbow label. Um, and again, this one has RL only on one side, but Master Disc, of course, on all four. This is the Specialty Records pressing. It sounds absolutely amazing. Some of these songs sound better than the early ABC variations of the studio albums. Um, I don't know if that's because of uh, Ludwig was granted access at that point in time to the Master Tapes. He probably was. 
Um, but yeah, they wanted to put out a great comp. Donald and Walter were heavily involved in the sequencing of this uh, Greatest Hits comp. I've talked all about this in many, many videos, including my kind of special, I'm kind of proud of these videos, uh, the Steely Dan Vinyl Guide videos. It's a three-parter. If you haven't checked it out and you're interested or you're a, a fan of Steely Dan, um, I spent a fair amount of time putting those together. And um, I, again, I'm kind of proud of those videos. I think, uh, I think they're fairly popular. I know they are. They've gotten tons of views. But that is the specialty records pressing of Steely Dan's Greatest Hits, mastered by Robert Ludwig. You want to find early pressings in the gatefold format, mastered by Bob Ludwig. Another album when I bought, I was looking for an, a, an early pressing of it, and they're getting harder and harder to find out there. Uh, this is the 1980 incredible ACDC album. First album uh, after, of course, Bon Scott's death. Uh, that is Back in Black. Let's see if we can get a little cooperation on our lighting here today. Here we go. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, featuring the embossed. ACDC, um, as well as Back in Black. Uh, I did an album on um, some kind of cool embossing features and, and special features on different uh, albums called Touch and Feel, um, and this was featured in that. But uh, this was on the Atlantic label the uh, label matrix on the label ends in dash SP, um, indicating it was a specialty records pressing. Um, just taking a quick look. The, uh, it, um, speaking of Bob Ludwig, uh, this has got master disc on both sides, and it's mastered by Bob Ludwig. That's the pressing you want to find, and I and making the case today that you should look for the specialty records pressing as well. Um, I've heard other pressings of this album. This is the best that I've heard yet. Re-released by Neil Young in uh, his kind of continuing box set series featuring uh, a chronological look at all the albums. I'm talking about 1989's Freedom. This was a huge return to form for Neil Young. Uh, this, of course, includes Rockin' in the Free World, No More, um, a cover song of On Broadway, that's amazing, El Dorado and Crime in the City. This is on the Reprise label after uh, Young left Geffen, and this is a specialty records pressing that sounds amazing. Highly, highly recommended. I do not have uh, the recent uh, reissued box set. Not sure if I'm going to get it. I'm really super happy with this pressing. Um, there you go. I've got two more albums to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about a synth pop classic. Um, I featured this album in, in um, I think it was a, a synth pop in four acts or something like that. Um, look in the playlist, but uh, I'm talking about Please from the Pet Shop Boys. There is that original hype sticker, and this is a, another specialty records pressing that sounds amazing. Great, great, great separation of instruments. All of the synthesizer work, the drum machines. Um, this has got West End Girls on it, of course. One of my favorites is Love Comes Quickly. This was on the EMI label. There it is. Very, very, very important album in the history of 1980s rock and roll, synth pop. Please from the Pet Shop Boys. Last but not least, we have the debut album from one of the most iconic artist in our lifetime. I'm talking about Madonna, the 1983 debut featuring that fantastic, 
photography and this was on the Sire label. This is a snapshot in time. This takes you back to New York in the early to mid 1980s. It's a it's it's like a time warp. Uh, listening to this album, um, you have um, what is basically a the signature sound of the Lynn drum machine. All the different synthesizer work. Madonna is playing cowbell, believe it or not, on one song. Um, Lucky Star, Borderline, Burning Up, and of course the huge hit, Holiday. That is another fantastic Specialty Records pressing. Uh, you can determine that by looking at the runout, the matrix information in the runout. SP is uh, uh, appearing in the actual Dead Wax. It, this one does not have the Specialty Records um, uh, machine stamped logo, but uh, the fact that SP is in the Dead Wax tells us that it was pressed at Specialty Records. What a great, great, great album. That is Madonna's debut from 1983. That's a wrap. I wanted to take a look today uh, at one of the more iconic pressing plants, now defunct, but it was an important cog in the record industry, in the machine, back in the, uh, the 70s and 80s, and uh, actually into the 90s as well. Specialty Records Corporation. Look for the cool logo in the Dead Wax, uh, or the embossed East uh, on the inner label ring. Um, or in the uh, actual catalog number matrix ending ending in dash SP that tells you it was pressed at specialty. Those are just 10 albums. Uh, there are many more in my collection, including things, uh, late 70s Led Zeppelin pressings that are highly regarded as well. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Tim at the University of Vinyl. Uh, if you liked it, the video today, that would be great if you wanted to just kind of like the video. And I have recently dug into my stats. Um, one thing that I thought was kind of interesting, 49% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. So half of the people who watch my videos uh, haven't subscribed. Um, so, hey.